the anguish and vigilance of things, reasonably short poems, so I hope I do not bore you. But um, does, uh, before I start, does anybody have a tomato? Is anybody carrying tomatoes? Is anybody, can you please declare your tomatoes? Shoes. Anything that can be thrown at me, could you please declare it? In case you are not allowed to stop me. No, yeah, you can. Anything that can be thrown, please declare it over there. Okay, now I shall proceed to inflict my poems. So, the first two poems are going to deal with the issue of poetry. One is going to deal with love, and then one, one last one. So, the first poem I'm going to read is a prose poem, and it's titled The Will. And uh, the idea is to explore the nature of poetry and what exactly the poet's craft is about. <clears throat> a poet is a gray eminence, always sitting at an angle to the market of affairs, making notes, seeing everything, entering into every nuance in intercourse. From these notes come the poems, things distilled. The job of a poet is to agitate words so they yield their true core, as does wine, to induce in the reader that which each word is nakedly, that is, pure mood. In these poems, the poet presents his life as a patient on a surgeon's table, and there are no, have been no themes to his life as these reveal. These have only been a series of glances, his eye resting on this or that, his poems becoming points of emphasis, seeking to undress and pare away adjective and lie alike. He's not naked in these poems, but poems are testimony to what is laid naked. Someone is always naked beneath poems. A poem is a thin information. Form is important. A woman's hips widen and keeps safe what is hidden. Just as a glance is an irregular thing, there is no science to it, no mathematics to how it falls. In trying to capture an emphasis in terms of mood, as a poet must, the difficulty is finding a form for what is by its nature elusive. It is as finding a spell strong and nimble enough to say, stay, stay still until essence reveals itself. Sometimes each poem enters the form of its nature. Each poem is a record of a man crashing himself into the fluid story of his times. The poet is a gray eminence, always at an angle to the stairs. Ours is the endless vigilance of things. This is our testament. So, this, the first poem I'm going to read is titled, She Shall. She shall insists on finding me, braving pothole seas, comes to rest as my feet, saying not a word, holding, hollow lessons of what has gone before, keeping faith in the promise that love stretches to pick up. Pairing the lie of certitudes, I do, eyes do more than mirror, depths of grayness. Damned by irises are errant desires, cresting to breast, fires that sometimes volcano like tears, raining redemptive pearls and sand. Between eternities, I explore subterns, whiffs of perfume, cadence of laughter, chance glances glimpsed at market squares, ephemera. Dreams are groves in psyche, beckoning our trust. I close my eyes and melt into her dream. The second poem is titled, We to Poetry, which is uh, trying to invoke poetry. Weaving dreams together in the secularity of this room, ambling amidst the ballet of bearded words going kamikaze, Nimble imps turn great wheels, then burst into a dazzle of flame. We are the soul gods and prisoners of this. Each word is steeped, is aged steeply as ocean drops whiskered gray from primeval minds in the tongues of those here before. 
In the tyranny of our sleepwalk, we cannot let the mirror drop. For youth is youth's own elixir, our flaw is in our dreams. I miss the careering, all we can do is find the thing unknown. Baptize meaning with tears, seek to loop renegade metaphors onto styles of peculiar madness, so gray memorials posterize poets, a race of gods who were, but briefly, men. Thank you. than that to appreciate Richard Ali. All right, Richard, don't go yet. I appreciate everything you read there. But there was a part you said, when you close your eyes, you dream of me. Was it me, like me? Absolutely. <laughs> but I don't dream. You know what about poets? They are naturally... <laughs> she, said, she took it out of her mouth. I did not say that. I've never told a lie in my life before. <laughs> For Richard Ali, all the way from the city of Abuja, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for. Okay. Yeah, I have a last one to read. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Wait, wait. You didn't like my poems. You're driving me. Away. No, I did. I thought you were done now. Uh, no. I didn't want that part where you said you would dream about me to just go like that. I needed to catch you in on that. Okay. Yes. It was about you. The next one is about me too, right? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. So there you go. Okay. I love you as ash, I say. Each speck of. <laughs> okay, so it's titled Ash. There you go. Okay. Uh, ash and Ash naturally is for Zainab. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ash. I love you as ash I say, each speck of me teases a pore of your skin, headswoman brown, as ants across earth. My desire invades you, nothing is left but the stare of your eyes. Eyes are pathways, I've seen enough, truth is but the echo of dreams. Flecks of arms, taste of tongue, the way you lay in my bed are all truths, eyes are doorways. The roads are old, the lines are ancient, all lead to this Kampala of topped hills hiding secrets. You despair the end of fire, I say, ash is potent too. Ash is the dream of wood that cannot be burned. Thank you very much. We can do better than that.